course correction should be necessary to put the unmanned Mariner 6 spacecraft right on course toward Mars. The camera carrying space probe was launched on its 226 million mile journey last night and is scheduled to start sending back close-up pictures of Mars this summer. Meanwhile, weathermen predict partly cloudy skies over Cape Kennedy on Friday, acceptable conditions for the launch of Apollo 9. An Eastern Airline... The space agency revealed today that all three Apollo 9 astronauts have developed stuffy noses and sore throats, and that their space flight, now scheduled to start Friday, may have to be postponed for a day or two. The men also are tired from their heavy training schedule. They'll undergo physical examinations again tomorrow morning, after which the decision will be made on whether to postpone the mission. On the success of Apollo 9 hangs the nation's hope of landing men on the moon this summer. But this will be the first manned test in space of this strange vehicle, which on future flights will ferry two astronauts from the Apollo spaceship orbiting the moon 59 miles down to the lunar surface. It looks strange, like something to step on. And indeed, its space agency nickname is the Spider. But we must get used to out-of-the-world shapes like this, designed without any earthbound constraints to function solely out of this world. The Lem is not streamlined, as you see, for it operates only in space with no atmosphere to slow it or to buffet it. The surface is barely skin thick, and its structure is so delicate that a man's weight might collapse the ladder or punch holes in the sides if it were on Earth. It will be operating, though, where men weigh only one-sixth of what they do on Earth. It can't operate in Earth conditions, so it can't come back from space. On this and future missions, the astronauts must get it back to the Apollo command ship or they can't get home. The LEM, or the lunar module, is 23 feet high. It weighs 16 tons. It's really two vehicles. This is the descent stage with an engine to lower the LEM to the moon's surface and to act as a launching pad for the ascent stage, this part, which with its engine will take the men back to the orbiting command ship. The two astronauts enter the LEM through this docking tunnel on top attached to the command ship. They ride here in this portion, standing up, and they leave down these nine steps to the moon for their visit there. On this trip, astronaut Rusty Schweikert will leave the LEM out of this hatch for a space walk and a stay on this so-called front porch. The LEM's built by Grumman Aircraft at Bethpage, Long Island. New shell for a future lunar module, up on a strange machine which does nothing but give it a good shape. Jarring loose any stray rivets, bolts, or even metal dust that could cause trouble in space. And here in Grumman's clean room is a simulation of a LEM upper stage. We were given a tour of this earthbound spacecraft by Grumman stand-in astronaut Dick Sprague. If you want to come on in there with me, I'll, I'll show you what the room really looks like from the operator's side. Well, inside, we're going to see what uh, what the LEM on Apollo 9 really is like, what they're really going to fly. That's right, with a few minor differences that I'll point out. And just crawl on in? Go ahead. Okay, you're in the commander's position there now. You see the main control and uh, instrument panels here. It's uh, something like aircraft, you said. Now your computer uh, keyboard is here. This, this you tell the computer what you want it to do, and it tells you what it wants you to do. But this is your interface with it. Normally, most of your flying is done automatically by the computer. However, you do have your flight controls there, and if you want to uh, get a grip on each one, you can get an idea of what flying this would be like. Now, uh, these are the control uh, throttles uh, in, uh, or guidance control. Yes, well, what you have in your right hand here is an attitude controller. You have six directions of motion. The fire, the reaction control system, jets, rockets, so really, to give you the attitude you're looking for. So when he tilts it over here, it tilts to the left. Yes. Uh, here it tilts to the right by the firing of those uh, reaction control engines on the exterior of the spacecraft. The astronauts will be standing up in the LEM, but will be prevented from drifting around by wires attached to their spacesuits. And then they have uh, hand rests and guards to position themselves. During the landing, they would have this guard on the window, for instance so that if they were forced forward, the helmet would not strike the glass. The bar would be there. They have another handrail on the side. These windows uh, are canted so that they can look down at the lunar surface as they're landing in this uh, position. That's correct. Yeah. 
During the Apollo 9 mission, the most important experiment will be rendezvous and docking. The pilot of the lunar module will approach the Apollo spacecraft, sighting through a window above his head. Well, he'll be looking at a docking target on the command module, which is a standoff T. It looks like this. Mm -hmm. And by aligning it with a painted T below the surface of it, he'll have his 3D reference. Uh -huh. He can come right in the chute, so to speak. The, the painted T is on the uh, command module as well? That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah, Did he use on. this uh, gauge that's uh, printed there in yes. the glass? Yes, use this reference point right there on the docking target. Yeah. Once the rendezvous is complete, the astronauts will remove the hatch and crawl back into the Apollo command module. As Dick Sprague demonstrated, they would have a chore to do first. That funnel-shaped device he's removing is called the drogue. It's attached to the tunnel of the LEM, and during the docking procedure, it engages a probe on the Apollo capsule. The probe is then withdrawn from above, while the astronauts in the LEM remove and secure the drogue. This opens up the tunnel between the two spacecraft. Of course, that will be a lot easier to do in the weightlessness of space. Okay. Then they're free to egress up into the command module. When they do that, they can cast the limb off and go home. The surgical cleanliness is to keep any foreign material out of the delicate space machine. Can ...have developed colds and sore throats, which may cause a postponement of Friday's scheduled launch from Cape Kennedy. The space agency says it will decide by tomorrow morning whether to delay the mission and for how long. Although the countdown is proceeding, the crewmen are resting and are taking medication. The Apollo 9 astronauts, all three of them, have caught colds all at the same time. And so there might be a delay in their flight, which is now scheduled for Friday. Their symptoms sound like those so often described lovingly and meticulously on television commercials. Sore throats, aches and pains, and congested nasal passages. The space agency doctor, Dr. Berry, has put them on decongestants, antihistamines, liquids, and told them the rest. The Apollo launching scheduled tomorrow has been delayed until Monday morning because all three of the astronauts have head colds. The officials thought the crewmen would not be able to work at full efficiency with sore throats, runny eyes, and stopped up noses, like the actors in the television commercials. The postponement cost $500,000, and so they might have been the most expensive head colds in the history of the world. Here's the space agency's doctor, Charles Berry. We felt that knowing what we do about this environment, that we could almost certainly guarantee, after looking at the crew this morning, I felt the only thing I could say was that I could absolutely guarantee that we were going to have three sick crewmen and five if we launched. And uh, that being the case, uh, it leaves us very little choice but to say we, we really cannot take that risk and, and uh, launch the crew when we're not trying to meet some window or something as, as we have been on, on some of the other missions. So. All this emphasizes a nagging, annoying truth. Modern science can send men to the moon and back, but it cannot cure a cold in the head. The launch of Apollo 9, which had been scheduled for tomorrow morning, was postponed today until Monday because the three-man crew are tired and suffering from colds. After the decision to postpone the start of the 10-day Earth orbital mission was announced, CBS News correspondent David Schumacher talked with Chief Astronaut Physician Dr. Charles Berry at Cape Kennedy. Dr. Berry, your own latest medical bulletin say the astronauts are all feeling better. Why then the delay in the launch? Well, Dave, we're concerned about the activity to the point that uh, we cannot have them become ill in this world. Dr. Barry told, told uh, Shoemaker that the astronauts' colds uh, began to develop last Monday, but he ha does not question that they come from fatigue from a very difficult training program, that he'd like to see the training program stretched out a bit, and it's under consideration. The delay will enable President Nixon, who returns from Europe on Sunday, to watch the launch from the White House. And that's the way it is, Thursday, February 27, 1969. This is Walter Cronkite, Air Base. The Apollo 9 space flight, originally scheduled to be launched tomorrow, has been postponed until Monday because the three astronauts have colds. This is the first American manned space flight ever delayed for medical reasons. Crewmen of the Apollo 9 are recovering from their colds. 
They exercise today and rehearsed for their 10-day orbit of the Earth. The launch is scheduled for Monday morning. Engineers expect to resume the preliminary countdown early tomorrow at Cape Kennedy. ABC News will televise the launching of the Apollo 9 live beginning at 10 a.m. Eastern Time on Monday. Scott, parental advice today for her son who's suffering from a cold. Cover your neck and chest with camphor salve and breathe through a little flannel tent, she said. Scott and his two fellow astronauts are reported recovering nicely from the colds of forced postponement of their Apollo 9 launch until Monday. The astronauts also were tired from their rigorous preparations, but still did some more training today. CBS News correspondent David Shoemacher at the Florida moon port has taken a look at the burdensome routine astronauts follow prior to launch. Although the astronauts are always in training, in classroom and simulators, it is the last two months before a mission that are the toughest. The final weeks are filled with things they alone can do. They must approve every change in their spacecraft, every modification of their personal gear. They must take the flight plan and translate it into procedure. Add a second spacecraft, the lunar module in the case of Apollo 9, and their problem snowballs. The result for astronauts McDivitt, Scott, and Schweikert, an unbroken string of 18-hour days. Two weeks ago, they admitted they weren't sure they'd be ready in time. And, though exhaustion showed in their faces, they asked for extra training. Long hours were spent working out the coordination between the spacecraft command module, the LEM, and mission control. McDivitt and Schweikert in the LEM, practicing the rendezvous that must work. Scott, alone in the command ship, working on rescue procedures should the LEM fail. And then, after the others left, practicing the procedure no one talks about very much, re-entering by himself after assuming he has been forced to abandon his colleagues in space. Schweiker, too, is pushing himself. Besides his crew responsibilities, he has a demanding solo act, the only extravehicular activity of the Apollo program. The astronauts have found that underwater work comes closest to approximating the sensations of weightlessness, and so Schweikert has spent a number of days practicing his spacewalk in the big pool at Houston. Unlike simulating weightlessness or zero-g in an airplane, there's no time restriction underwater. Planes are still used for part of the training, but since they can maintain zero-g for no more than 30 seconds at a time, the practice must be broken into segments. So it was apparently the total of all this work, plus the late night hours flying from coast to coast to the various training and manufacturing sites that finally wore down the crew of Apollo 9. And their physician, Dr. Charles Berry, predicts it will happen again, unless there are drastic changes in what we demand of our astronauts. David Schumacher, CBS News, Kennedy Space Center, Florida. The Apollo 9 launching is scheduled now for 11 o'clock Monday morning, Eastern Time. The astronauts are recovering from their $500,000 head goals. The flight will be seen on NBC television.